Right, it's the first section of chapter five, and we're t which is all about radians, and we're going to be looking at radians. And uh, this first bit is an introduction to what a radian is. So a radian is another way to measure an angle. So a radian is another way to measure angles. Okay, so far you've been measuring uh, angles all in degrees. Yeah, and we know all about a full circle is 360, a straight line is 180, right angle is 90. So we know all those types of stuff and we know how to manipulate degrees. There is another way to measure angles and actually uh, it has some advantages by uh, measuring it a certain way. And this is all based on a circle of radius 1. Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing a circle with and let's say that the radius of this circle is one yeah so let's just draw two things here and let's say I'm, I'm interested in this angle here um, but just a different way of measuring this angle so let's call that one let's call that one now um, let's say for example I look at this bit of the circumference here which is called an arc yeah now as long as this angle stays the same the length of this arc is going to be the same this bit in green so whatever that angle is for a fixed angle it will give me a certain length arc and this is what um, radians are based on you could think of a radian as being the arc length produced by an angle here at the center or sub subtended by the angle at the center. So this arc length is made by an angle of theta at the center. So why not just call this angle whatever the arc length is? And we could, that's what a radian is. So with radians, we call the arc length equal to theta. This is for a radius of one. And that's really useful. If we say, right, let's call this arc length the same as this angle at the center for a radius of one. Now, it actually doesn't really matter later on what the radius is. What's important is that for a particular angle, it will make a particular arc length. Now, so if we're relating it to arc length, let's think about um, a full circle. So you're gonna have, if you've got a radius of one, so all of the stuff here is about a radius of one. If I have an arc length of a full circle, which is 360 degrees, if you go around a full circle, my arc length will be two pi, and that's two pi in radians. So quite often you'll see like a little, little C there. I don't think they use it in the book. That tells you what you're talking about radians. So two pi would be the circumference of a circle with a radius of one. Okay, how about 180 degrees? Well, that's half a circumference of a circle of radius of one. So that's pi radians. Then 90 degrees, well, that's a quarter of the circumference. So that's a quarter of two pi. So that'd be pi over two. There's loads of different things we can do. We can work out what 60 degrees is. For example, they're all sort of nice values. That would be um, pi over three radians, 45 degrees would be um, pi over four and so on. Yeah, so this thing that I'm gonna highlight in yellow here at the end, this is gonna be this new way that we measure 
angles in terms of pi. So as long as we remember that a full circle is 360 degrees, you won't really go wrong. You can use that to do all sorts of different conversions. I would say, if we remember that, if we remember this, pi radius 180, then the rest are really easy to work out. So let's do a couple of conversions. Right, so here it says convert the following angles into uh, degrees. Now, when I'm doing these questions, I just remind myself, right, that two pi radians is 360 degrees, and I work from there. Okay, so I've got something over eight here, so I'm gonna try and do these without a calculator. Right, so pi um, is 180, so pi over eight, which means doing 180 divided by eight, so that's gonna be half it 90, half it again 45, half it again um, is 22.5, so pi over eight is 22.5 degrees, so I'm doing pi a here, um, so seven pi over eight, so if I times 22.5 uh, times that by seven, so I'll just do that quicker in the calculator, so 22.5 times by seven, so I get 157.5 degrees, okay? So what I did there was said, right, okay, I'm using what I know that um, pi radians is 180. So if I divide that by eight, I get 22.5 and then times it by seven, yeah? You could use your calculator, but I, I prefer this method and B. So four pi over 15 is what I want, want to work out. So I'm gonna start with um, pi radians is 180. So let's work out what pi over 15 is. So I'll do 180, divide that by 15. So I get 12 degrees. So that means that four pi radians over 15, so times that by four, I get 48 degrees, nice and easy. Okay. Here we're converting the other way um, so again, I just use things that I know. So for example, if I start with pi is 180, let's think about a common factor, 30. So if I can work out what 30 degrees is, so I divide by six, so pi radians over six. Um, now if I times that by five, I get 150 degrees. I prefer to do it this way. Okay, and then part B, start with um, pi radians is 180. I'm thinking about a common factor. Now, if, what if I divide by 18 to get 10? So that's gonna be 10 degrees. Um, and then if I times that by 11, I'll get 110 degrees. So that's then 11 pi radians over 18. Yes, yeah, so I'm just sort of doing this really. I'm saying, right, okay, divide by um, six here, just so that I can get, you know, to a number which I can then convert into the number that I want. Same here, I divided by 18. Notice how we keep this as fractions. And then from there, I can times by um, 11. Yeah, so all very straightforward. But, you know, start knowing that pi is 180, two pi is 360, makes it really easy to do. Right, okay. So here we're gonna use our calculators. Now, if you're gonna work out sine, cos, or tan of um, an angle in radians, um, don't convert the angle to degrees, convert your angle to radians. So as soon as you say something like this, you need to change 
your calculator into radians mode and then to do that you press set up and then I think it's number two for angle unit and then you change it into radians and then you can work these out okay so the first one sine of 0 0.3 radians so it's saying give your answers to decimal place so if I do that on the calculator uh, sine of 0 0.3 I get 0 0.2 uh, two nine five five so on so two decimal places would be naught point three zero um, B um, because of pi radians which I suppose is the same as doing um, the cosine of 180 degrees but as I said don't change it into um, don't change it into degrees and try and work it out uh, that way it's much easier to change your, the, the mode on your calculator and this will give you one and the third one there the tan of two radians so again keep your calculator in radians mode um, and you'll need to keep your calculator in radians mode for the whole of this chapter pretty much tan of two radians and to two decimal places 0 0.03 okay so graph of sine from 0 to 2 pi which is a bit like doing the graph of sine from 0 to 360 but uh, what we need to do is when we mark the scale Let's draw the graph on first like that when we mark the x-axis the angle axis we're going to mark it in terms of or in radians okay that's the first one it's number four okay let's do one for number five and he's saying sketch the graph of x plus uh, pi between um, 0 and 2 pi so we'll draw our axis so this is going to be like the graph of cos but there's a a shift of pi this way it's like a shift of 180 degrees that way so if we draw what that would look like something like that so let's stick our numbers on going up to one down to minus one um, here is going to be two pi uh, this bit in the middle here would be pi so that means that this is um, three pi over two and this is pi over two yeah every 90 degrees every pi over two something is happening that's a lot Another useful one to remember um, is that uh, pi over 2 radians is 90 degrees. Lots of other ones that you can derive from that pi equals 180. Okay, so the shapes of the graph remains the same. All that changes is what you have on the uh, x-axis. And I suppose, strictly speaking, I should be putting x there. And on the y-axis, this should be uh, labelled as y here. And the same here, labelled as y. Okay, so you should now be in a position where you can do exercise 5a on page 116.